Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or simply hoping to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. On today's podcast, we're going to talk a, about some advice for parents mm-hmm. who are have their kids involved in youth sports or interested right. in getting their kids involved in youth sports. I love the title. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I had to I had to read this when I yeah. when I happened upon it. Lessons learned from twenty seven years. I can't even imagine twenty seven years. Twenty seven years of youth sports, uh, youth sport parenting. Wow. Yeah. So this is a an article from the Seattle Times. And right. The link is in the show notes. Um, there's actually two articles linked in the mm-hmm. show notes, and one is the other is from Healthline, uh, kind of talking about um, how pediatricians recommend right. children to play more than one sport, and that's something that yeah. this guy mentions as well. Yeah, we we talked about that um, in one of the other podcasts this week mm-hmm. about uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics right. and how they. Um, they really speak with some authority because mm-hmm. they get experts from the field and, and they put together these position papers right. and one of them was on youth sports and they said, one of the things they said is that have your child play more than one sport. Right. Um, it's good for many, many reasons. But the main one is is that you, you move away from this idea that you're going to begin your professional career right. at age six or seven or three, right. you know, because you hear these stories of Tiger Woods or Olympic athletes or mm-hmm. the Serena and Venus Williams who started their sport at age two or three. Right. Um, and and so they are the outliers. But they're the out, they're going to be outliers their entire lives. That would have happened for them and to them, no matter what they did. They would have been discovered in school or in some playground. You just discover those outliers because right. they're so different. Right. Mm-hmm. So don't think just because you start your chi- that you start your child at three mm-hmm. that your child's going to become an outlier. Right. It doesn't matter. No. Mm-hmm. Um, so so yeah. So it's and one of the other reasons why playing multiple sports is important mm-hmm. is uh, well, there's two other reasons. One is that it helps reduce fatigue. Right. It, when a child is doing the same sport mm-hmm. constantly. You know, right. they do. They get really good at using those muscles in right. those ways, but it, it, it limits some of their um, diversity right. in their physical um, awareness and physical mm-hmm. activities, and and that's that can be a problem down the line. Yeah, think of it as cross training. Mm-hmm. You know, it's better to do multiple things. And mm-hmm. the way our joints work, my brother always reminds me of this, is that a our, most of our ball and socket joints are meant to move mm-hmm. in, in 360 degrees. If you do the same sport over and over again, you're moving in the same direction. For example, runners have the same motion. Right. It's back and forth. And it's meant to be a, a circular right. 360 mm-hmm. degree. So one is fatigue, and the other is you're developing one set of muscles. Right. And what you should be doing in, in these developmental years, mm-hmm. you should be developing all of your muscles. Right. And you do that by participating in a range of sports. Right. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the third second or last reason um, mm-hmm. that, that playing one sport is more problematic is that the kid just gets burned out you from burn it. Out. And right. it, that was mentioned in the article about the 27 years of sport parenting. Uh-huh. Um, is the, the kids will get burned out right. and, and so it defeats the purpose mm-hmm. that you're that you're trying to, that, that you think you're trying to accomplish. Right. Yeah, you think you think all this work and effort and participation is making a child better. What you may be doing is mm-hmm. is just um, Turning the child off to all sports by right. the time they're twelve or thirteen. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so as we go through the, some of these um, things to consider, things to, right. to think about. Yeah, as, these, a, as a parent. How many are there? Uh, he has a, a long whole lot list. Of, he has a whole I mean, lot of about twenty-seven here. of them. Um, okay. Yeah, um, but there's uh, there, there's a few that we're going to highlight right. because they're. Important and they're important for parents to be aware of because, mm-hmm. um, well, let's just say this the, the second one was one that, that caught my eye. And he says, Throw the words select, premier, or elite in front of a sports program, and there's no end to the amount of effort and money we parents will put forth to right. get our kid into it. Mm-hmm. I think that is so important for parents to understand. Um, you know, 
sports teams, especially competitive or travel teams, they will use those kinds of words. Right. They really don't mean what you imagine them meaning. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we um, my soccer team is, um, you know, we're we're sort of second division, right. sometimes even third division. We're, we're, we're these aren't the the best kids in, in mm -hmm. the league um, from their um, particular performance level. They love playing, um, right. and we've fostered a, a, a culture of of just fun and mm -hmm. enjoyment and that kind of thing. Uh, but they're they're not right. These aren't going to be professional players. Mm -hmm. But, um, and most of them know that. Um, I say most of them know right. that. But, um, but, but what will happen is we will go to a match and we'll play, we'll, we'll look at the other team that we're playing and they'll be called the premier this or mm -hmm. that or the, mm -hmm. you know, um, elite this or that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you go into it with this anxiety. They're, they're, they're no, no better. No better right. than, mm -hmm. than we are. So right. it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a tactic, a strategy used mm -hmm to sort of differentiate uh, two levels of a team or something like that. Right. But it is, in some ways, just a just a hook right. uh, to get people to be involved in it. Right, yeah, it's true. Um, that's where every every parent wants his or her child to be at that elite level. Mm -hmm. um, and that's often not what it means. Right, right. yeah, so, so that was one that, that really caught my eye. I like the fourth uh, one. Yeah? <laughs> because, oh, yeah. you know, if, <laughs> If, you're, if your goal is to get your child to be a Division One athlete, you need to rethink it. First of all, it's probably not going to happen. Right. He's absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the probability is so small. My, my kids play tennis, and the tennis players who play Division One tennis have already been to professional tournaments. Right. They've been to Wimbledon. They've been to the, America, the, the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. They're competing at an international level. They're ranked internationally. Right. Well... Take a look at your city, look at all the tennis players, and tell me how many are ranked internationally yeah. in, in the teens and 20s. Yeah. Because that's who's playing Division One tennis. Right. They are professional level players. Yeah. Okay? There just aren't that many of them around. And it doesn't matter what the sport is. Right. You know, Division One football, baseball, basketball, these are highly skilled athletes. Right. Okay? So yeah. it's probably not going to happen. Right. And if, you, if it is going to happen, you'll know when they're 9 or 10 because they're going to be playing with older kids. And, and it... And regardless, that shouldn't be your goal. That shouldn't be the goal anyway. That's right. Even if, even if, no, it shouldn't be, because that's what's going to drive you, to drive your kids crazy. Right. 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 Um, another one that actually pulls from several of the bullet points he has there, yeah. kind of harkens back to what we talked about yesterday, which is you know, over-involved, demanding parents mm -hmm. can be a problem, uh, but the, the important thing is for parents to be nurturing and encouraging right. and supportive uh, and, and to, and not just of their child, but of the other players and of the coach and, and, and everyone involved. Right, right. Um, yeah, it's so important. <laughs> yeah, the happiest day in a sport parent's life is yeah. when your child can drive him or herself yes. to practices and games. We were talking about it's that. It's true. Oh my gosh. It's you and I were great. talking about that in between in between right. recording podcasts. Right. That for my team, my, my players now drive and it's It's such a relief. So better. You know, it keeps the parents out yeah. too. Um, one of the other things he mentions earlier and I and I agree with him, um, the best players at at the youngest age is eight, nine. Right. Are typically not the best players right. uh, when they become young adults or older teenagers, and the reason is puberty. Right. Okay, and he calls puberty the great equalizer, and it really is. Until a child has gone through puberty, yeah. it is about three years out, and they've had that growth spurt. You really don't know what their muscle system is going to look right. like and how it's going to react. Right. And so, don't put too much emphasis on what happens at eight mm -hmm. or nine because that's all going to change after puberty. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Get ready. Um, I like what he says about the recommendations or encouragements about umpires and referees. Um, look, if the if the umpire, referee, or whoever is under the age of eighteen, mm -hmm. chill out. Right. You know, it's a it's a kid. So they, it's yeah, doing it's the best kid. he can. Don't don't yeah. whine and complain and argue and right. debate and you know scream at. Call him blue. Yeah. It's it's a. It's a the, kid, right. um, and even if it's an adult, but it's a volunteer, <laughs> well, just chill out. It's either a volunteer or it's some high school kid making $20 for coaching, 
you know, for refereeing a yeah, or for refereeing a match, yeah. you know, and yeah, leave them alone. Yeah, you know, they're they're doing their best. Um, speaking of money, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> He said, don't buy the expensive equipment. And he says, a corollary. Yeah. If there's a choice between a $150 bat and a $300 bat, buy the $150 bat. And then he says, just trust me on this one. Yeah. But he's absolutely right. Yeah. You're kid- I was shocked when um, when we played, of course, we, we didn't buy any equipment, maybe shoes and a glove. Mm-hmm. The, everything else was provided. When my son played, and I skipped a generation here, when my son went back to play, suddenly these young kids little, were carrying bags. Yeah. They're, they were carrying all their equipment, you know, uh, fake sp- well, rubber cleats. You know, mm-hmm. they, they couldn't wear steel until they were yeah. 13. Yeah. Um, helmets, batting, their own batting helmet, their mm-hmm. own glove, batting gloves and metal bats and yeah. all this equipment. Even the catchers, their yeah. parents would buy them all their own catching equipment. Yeah. We used whatever equipment was supplied to us. Yeah. You know? So I was surprised with this equipment yeah. business um, and the expense of it. Yeah, you know, that, that it's very expensive. I don't know how... M- well, the, the rise of, of the sports store, yes. you know, right. is, is the because of all of that. Yeah, because you... you, you and, and it's interesting, as we think about it that way, that as parents and players have become more and more responsible for getting their own equipment, mm-hmm fees to play in sports, the registration fees, continued to go up. And you wonder, Mm -hmm. why are they still going up? The coaches are volunteers. You're not buying equipment for the kids to use because they all have their own equipment. So why are you spending, you know, $150 to play recreation soccer um, when the parents have everything Mm -hmm. uh, or buying everything? Yeah, you're buying everything. Yeah, my son Um, was a catcher for a while and I remember Going mm-hmm. out and getting, I think we bought him a whole yeah. set of catchers. I did with my son, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and another one that he mentions, or that was related to buying the expensive equipment, is I'm also amazed at parents who, who bend when their kids want these really expensive, mm-hmm. this really expensive gear right. that they're just going to grow out of. They're, in a two years, they'll you know, grow in, out of. In, 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 or, or even less than that. Mm-hmm. In, in, you know, in soccer, that's what I know the most is, you know, you can buy soccer boots or soccer cleats that $200, $250. And oh. I had players on my team that would, that whose parents bought them mm-hmm. boots that, and my son would ask for them. I was like, you know, in one season, in six his, his, yeah. his foot would go from a size, right. you know, 10 to a size 12. Mm-hmm. There's no, I'm not going to buy right. $200 shoes. Mm-hmm. When you're going to grow out of them in a couple of months, right? That's ridiculous. Yeah, Yeah. or a bat. You know, you buy a bat, and you spend three hundred dollars for it, and suddenly it's too small. Right, and and then you grow an inch, and now all of a sudden it needs to be a bigger Mm -hmm. bat. So yeah, Yeah. it's um. So, so save on the heavy equipment. Save your money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to matter. Yeah, and and some of the uh, one of the last ones that he has here is that you know in the end it's not about sports. Right. It's not about. The, the matches or the games mm-hmm. or any of that kind of thing. It's about building relationships. It's about having right. fun. It's about learning about themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's about a lot of the other psychosocial aspects right. of, of athletics that have nothing to do with the game or sport itself. Right. We said early on this week that um, one of the things we're robbing our children of is the opportunity to do unstructured play mm-hmm. where they learn how to negotiate everything. Right. Okay, it's, it's one thing to take that away. It's another thing to replace it with these highly competitive, highly right. organized, very expensive sports right. where the adults have taken over mm-hmm. and the kids are just sort of participants. They're mm-hmm. not really actively engaged. They're just, they're there because the adults are there. The other thing that one of the writers said, and I don't remember which one it was, don't make the ride home mm-hmm. from the game the worst right. time of your child's life. Right. I mean, can you imagine what is said in cars after the game to these poor kids? You know, mm-hmm. they've done, they've gone out there, they've done their best, they're doing as well as they can. They have multiple things going on. They have to go to school the next day, and on the way home after every game, you have to have this. Right. Lecture, and it must be the worst experience of a child's life right. to go through those lectures. Yeah. You know, leave them alone. Go out and have dinner. Go out and enjoy yourself. You you just put your kid through this pressure cooker of a game. Yeah. Don't add to it by that miserable car ride home. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah. 
So, um, so yeah. So read through the. There's he has a. There's a whole lot more uh, mm -hmm. written in this article about this. Uh, again, you know, he just as a, a, a little um, you know teaser. One of the things he says is the greatest psychological trauma that you could that could happen to your mm -hmm. kid is for them to make the all star team. <laughs> That's right. No, but this guy has done it. I yeah. mean, he's done it for 27 years with several boys and girls. He's yeah. had sons and daughters participating in sports from little bitty kids to high schoolers. Mm -hmm. So he does speak with, with, with a lot of experience yeah. and a lot of wisdom yeah. that he's learned over time. We have all learned that. I wish I could go back and redo yeah. some of my, I mean, oh. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. yeah. So, so read the read, check out the article. Uh, you you will certainly enjoy it. So. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, that is it then. Yeah, for today. It's been a fun week. It has with this topic. It has. We should uh, go out and play some more sports. Yes. Fun, have fun. Yeah. You know, it's easy. Have fun. fun. Yep. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thanks for sharing this episode of the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find all of our previous podcasts and much more. We would be honored if you would become a patron through patreon.com where any donation you can manage will go to the development and creation of more content. Just visit patreon.com slash the mental breakdown for more information. Thanks again for listening. Have an awesome day and we look forward to being back in your feed tomorrow morning.